You've got the random sample. Get the random sample. Just give everyone a number. Pick some numbers randomly. What did this S add on to random sample? It's stratified, which is what's this stratified idea about? Yeah, it's about proportions of like I've got this many year sevens and this many year eights, so I'm gonna get I want to get the proportions right. What was this last one? Do you remember? It was the strangest one of all. Systematic sample, and everyone goes grease crazy. Um, why would we make it systematic? Isn't that the opposite of random? Don't you want it to be random? Why? Why don't you want it random? Here? You're right, I want it systematic, but why? Like, does anyone remember the example I gave you before? There's a particular place, actually a couple of different places, where systematic samples were useful. I think we're interviewing the only person, so you get a 5% Roughly 5%. Yep. How many people go? Perfect, that's right. So if you're checking something and there's kind of like, these people are going to go past you and you're never going to get them back, or it's very hard to get everyone in the one spot and randomly check everyone, then a systematic sample will make sure at regular intervals you get some of them. So today what we're going to focus on is picking which ones are which. Now the image I want to leave you with as you're doing this is this picture. Um, these different kinds of samples. Okay. They are different kinds of tools for very similar kinds of problems. Okay. So what do we got here? Can, I, can you guys see the pictures? What do we got? You got a hammer and a nail. You've got a... Does anyone know what it's called? Actually, knows what it's called. Okay, so this is particular. This is a spanner. You'd usually use a wrench for this. That's the adjustable one. And uh, what's it called? A spanner's work. A bolt. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, easy one? Screwdriver. Screwdriver. Screw. And all, all of the IKEA people are like, yay, Allen keys. Okay. Now, each of these is solving the same kind of problem. Right? It's like, look, I've got things that need to be attached or fastened. And so you can see, like, the shapes of these things are very similar to each other, but they've all devised kind of a different angle on it or a slightly different mechanism based on, like, what materials you're attaching together or what tools you have available to you, um, what kinds of things are easy to give to the people who are going to be constructing these tables and chairs. And it's exactly the same with these, right? You choose the tool based on what kind of scenario you're in, okay? Now, I'm all about metaphors. Now, one last item before I get you going on these questions is that you'll have a look at some... I'll just show you what I mean. You're going to have a look at some scenarios, right? You go these scenarios, and you're going to be asked, well, okay, which of these is the most suitable and why? Okay. Now, just like the tools I showed you before, if I give you a surface, I don't think it's necessarily, depending on the situation you're looking at, immediately obvious or clear-cut which one of these you could use. In a given situation, it's like, you know what, nails or screws, they would both be fine. So long as you justify why you're using one over the other, right? And it's exactly the same when you come back to this. Who was that? Um, that for many of these, it's like, well, you know what? A couple of these would probably work, right? But the important thing is, can you tell me why? Can you discuss? Give me a reason, right? You want to go for a systematic sample? That's fine, you could have done random as well, but if you know why you chose this one or the other one, that's the part that's being assessed. Does that make sense?